So this is uh, the greenhouse, um, just part of it here, and uh, these cuttings of these, I call them fire sticks, I'm not sure what the Latin name is. Um, there's, there's volunteer tomatoes that have come up in a few of them. Let's see one right here. I will, um, I've got one out on the potting bench and I'll film one of the video. And there's another one right there. And the gardeners, when they make these cuttings, uh, if there's a volunteer that comes up that's a desirable, they'll leave it until it's large enough to repot. <coughs> So these are different cuttings that we've done and some seeds that we've started from collected seeds. Uh, some different things that we'll, we'll be using around campus. So I'm over in the potting bench area of our nursery and I found this, uh, this volunteer tomato in one of the cuttings. I um, And I'm going to show you, this isn't one of the ones I planted the other day, this one's uh, been here for a couple of weeks, several weeks, and I'm going to show you what I mean when I say bury the plant. Now this only works with tomatoes and a couple other plants. If you did, if you were to do this with a, a tree, bury it deep like that, you'll kill the tree. Um, you don't want to. Almost all plants, you you plant them at the same height they were in the pot uh, because that's where the natural crown forms. But with tomatoes, they're unique. They have this furry um, stem, and each one of those little pieces of fur can be stimulated to grow into a, a, a root. Uh, you can increase the root size of the root ball by burying the plant deeper. And when you do plant deeper, one of the things you want to do is anything that's below the soil leaf-wise, you want to remove that. And uh, and the reason you do that is because if, uh, if this leaf gets buried in the soil, it will begin to rot and, and encourage um, all kinds of disease uh, that would damage the plant. So by removing it, uh, then you, you reduce the chance of that happening. And one of the interesting things you'll see I don't know how well this will show up, but there's a little, right here in the crotch of the leaf, is a little plantlet. You can actually remove those uh, off of a church tomato plant, and you can you can cause those to root. But I'm not interested in doing that. And there's actually a way to tell the difference in, in what the different types of tomatoes are by where if they do that or. And I don't want to I, I don't want to get into that, but the. There's a whole uh, science on, on, on uh, how to properly care and prune for, for tomatoes and where the tomato actually sets its fruit. If you look at this one real close, you can see there's some, some tomato buds right at the very end. Uh, and they come, they're right on one of those little plantlets. Right. So I'm going to put this in this pot. This is a five gallon pot. They call it five gallon, it's not really five gallon. It's a number five pot. Somewhere on it, it says that it's a number five pot. And I'm removing it from this uh, three inch pot uh, that we got from the nursery. Both of these pots are, are being recycled. <clears throat> what happened was this is a, I think I, in a different part of the video, I talked about this. This uh, cutting, is what the, the gardener was trying to, to root, and actually it has rooted. But also this volunteer came up, tomato came up, because it was in with the, the, with the uh, soil that was mixed in there. And uh, because it's a desirable plant, they let it go, and now it's at the point where it needs to be put in a bigger pot. You can see the root ball. See how nicely the roots are? formed around that root ball. Yeah. I'm going to separate these two and I'm just going to rip them apart. Now see, this cutting, this cutting hasn't formed any roots at all. So uh, 
they probably need to put that one back together. Um, I mixed up, mixed up some soil here. So it's about half sand and half worm casting. And screened. I'm going to get all the big... I screened it with an eighth inch screen to get all of the really large chunks of uh, organic matter out and just make it easier to handle. And then I've also mixed in oh, a bucket full of uh, peat moss and perlite mixed one to one. Peat moss and perlite, um, we use those in our house plants. Uh, because peat moss and perlite is a sterile mix that's used to pot and root stock in so we don't have to worry too much about germs but we mostly use it on our stage plants because we have to lift those things uh, sometimes they're like a six foot ficus tree or whatever and we have to put those on the stage when there's an event and they use the the plants on the stage to hide speakers and and that sorts of uh, stage props so we want to be able to move them and so we don't fill the pots up with soil we fill them up with peat moss and vermiculite and um, what's the other one? Perlite, vermiculite and peat moss. So you saw I removed I removed everything. I'm going to put this way down at the bottom and I've removed everything that's going to be under the soil level. This line right here, I don't know how well you can see that line, that's where I'm going to bring the soil level to. And I'll put this almost all the way to the bottom of the pot. about an inch of a layer of soil in the bottom. I'm just going to set this down in there like that. And I'm going to bury it all the way up to here. And that'll, that way, wherever those nodes are and the root hairs that are forming, uh, those will, that'll form a nice big root ball and make for a healthier plant. I think I, I talked about that in the last video that I talked about tomatoes. And I don't know what kind of tomato this is, but I'm sure it's some sort of a, a small. It could be, it could be one of the heirloom ones, because a lot of the, a lot of people are using the heirloom, uh, the heirloom tomatoes now. There. And I'll set this over in the shade area for a couple of days while it acclimates. But actually, this pot is large enough. This pot, I could probably leave this tomato in here its whole life because uh, there's plenty of, of soil here for it to, to uh, grow in. So yeah, I've uh, set that thing out. Um, started to talk about heirloom plants. Uh, heirlooms uh, actually is a name brand nowadays. But uh, the heirlooms have uh, been around for a very long time, some of them over a hundred years. Um, and not just the tomato heirlooms, that's the ones that are so popular right now. The but the heirloom, right. I can't seem to get it right, but uh, the heirloom uh, is one of the few uh, hybrid type tomatoes that will reproduce with the seed. Um, most of the heirlooms are true to seed. So when you plant a seed that you it's like you've raised an heirloom tomato that you like, I don't know the different, there's one called, I think called Brandywine or something, I don't know. They have different names. Lots of different varieties and colors and, and flavors. <clears throat> Some are bred to be sliced and put onto hamburgers and others are, made, are bred and uh, are produced to use in salads. Uh, all different reasons to make sauces and that sort of thing. So. Uh, I would suggest researching the type of uh, 
what you're going to do with the tomato before you actually grow the tomato. And if you get the heirloom variety, you can save the seeds from the, on most high cases, at least all the ones I know of, you can save the seeds and plant them in a, in a, in a garden and they will sprout true to, true to form. Where many of the hybrids will not reproduce by seed, you might get something entirely different. Um, so if you're going to plant the seeds from the tomato you grow, um, use the, the heirloom varieties. And that's what my at least my suggestion. I always they're they're pretty inexpensive. So every year I just go down and my garden, my home garden isn't real large, so I just go down every year and buy something new. Um, and as for the, here in San Diego, uh, we're in zone nine and ten uh, in San Diego, which which is a USDA zone, climate zone. Um, those that zone is uh, the growing season is very long. And there is no winter. So I can put my so tomatoes out by Valentine's Day, sometimes even earlier, February 1st. Um, I've even grown tomatoes, summer tomatoes, in the winter here because it's so warm here in the wintertime. Uh, and you'll have to, you know, go by where you are in the country. But here in Southern California, I always say start your tomato seeds at the 1st of December and the plantlets will be big enough to place out into the garden uh, just in time for the right weather. Because the uh, weather is a big thing. But anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, remember to press like and share uh, and, and uh, help me grow this, uh, this garden thing into a really nice uh, format for people to learn. I've been teaching gardening for probably more than 40 years now. Yeah, I think for over 40 years I've been teaching gardening. Uh, I was a certified organic gardener, uh, manager of a certified farm uh, back in the 70s, um, early 70s, 73, 74, somewhere in there, for several years, probably seven or eight years while I was going to college and studying agriculture. <clears throat> so remember to tell your friends and say, and again, thank you for watching.